Get ready for unique, rare, and little-known treasures from the golden age of radio. You're listening to The Amazing World of Radio with Adam Graham. Welcome to The Amazing World of Radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Today, we're going to conclude our summer series on the amazing world of radio with the last available episode of Top Secret I currently have. And uh, this one is uh, entitled The Dream That Meant Death, the original air date, October 19th, 1950. Let's go ahead and take a listen. This story is Top Secret. Top Secret, starring Ilona Massey as the Baroness Karen Gazer. In transcribed dramas of present day intrigue and espionage. Stories of a courageous woman fighting the war of ideas and ideologies in her own way with her own weapons. Tonight, the dream that meant death. A story still labeled Top Secret. strange fascination of the little-known Orient was woven into the terrifying pattern of assignment 16. Opie. The very word meant degradation, fear, and murder. What a strange trick of nature, a drug so, so horrible from a flower, so beautiful. These were my thoughts as I walked along the Yu Yang Chang Road in Kingdom, restless Shanghai. It was late in the afternoon. The streets were crowded, rickshaws, coolies, Pedicabs, cars. There were tiny undernourished children squabbling in the dirty gutters. Suddenly I realized I was being followed. A Chinese in a long black robe was directly behind me. Baroness? Are you following me? This will be your only warning. Leave Shanghai to the people who understand it. What do you want? How do you know who I am? I repeat, Baroness. Leave Shanghai to the people who understand it. You will not be warned again. I would never understand Shanghai. And I couldn't leave until I had uncovered the hellish scheme pressed by a nation bent on victory at any cost. My work on this assignment had begun weeks ago in Washington. The Narcotics Bureau. The office of Walter Desmond. So the point of all this, Baroness, is that we want you to go to China. Shanghai. You lived there once, didn't you? Only for a few months. It was before the war. Will you go? Well... There has been a steady flow of opium into the United States from a large dope ring in China. Where it's going in America is a matter of secondary concern. Secondary to what? Secondary to the fact that in China, this narcotics ring has been assuring a communist victory. With opium? Yes. But how? Every time the communists launch a major offensive, the defending nationalist troops are supplied with opium in their rations. After smoking the stuff, they're defenseless, stupid, helpless. Oh, how horrible. Then they're systematically slaughtered. But I don't understand. Surely the entire nationalist army isn't composed of dope addicts. Of course it isn't. But supposing every American soldier was given a bottle of whiskey just before he went into battle. He's nervous, tense. What would happen? He'd drink it. Of course he'd drink it. Yet he wouldn't necessarily be an alcoholic. Yes, I see what you mean. It's one of the rottenest things we've ever come across, and it's got to be stopped quickly. We've got to find out where the stuff is coming from, how it gets into the two rations. I'd be glad to help. Good. Who's my contact in Shanghai? Now, his name is Chi Wai Lung. Has a shop at 243 Yu Ya Chang Road. He poses as a jade merchant. Actually, he's a general in Chinese intelligence, working for us. He's short, stout, about 60, gray hair. Now, when you go into a shop, you will ask him if he has any jade from the Great Wall. He will tell you the best jade is still in the Great Wall and ask you for a sample of the kind you're looking for. And then? 
You give him this. You see, it's a tiny jade Buddha with two arms missing. General Lung will have the missing arm. I see. Uh, incidentally, I know someone else who might be of use to us. Who? A man named Bob Reynolds. He and I did some work together for British espionage in Germany. He's in Shanghai working with a Chinese export firm. Can you trust him? I worked with him before, Mr. Desmond, under circumstances where my life depended on my trusting him. You needn't mention General Lung to him. Our agent's identities must remain secret. Of course. Well, that's all. I'll arrange your transportation, visa, paper. I hope you'll be successful and careful. You're plunging into a nest of maniacs. <laughs> The longest part of my journey from America seemed to be the four-hour sail up the Wang Pu River to my destination, Shanghai. As we approached the waterfront of the most fabulous city in the Orient, my mind wandered strangely. Here, on the clean, dirty bound, I was to pick up the threats of a friendship with Bob Reynolds, a man whom I had not seen for almost ten years. I remembered him as a clean, hard man with a flashing smile and a great personal charm. And here in the city, with the calm mystery of the East, with the rushing sophistication of the West, we were once again to be thrown together on an assignment that meant danger, perhaps death. I checked in at the Park Hotel in Nanking Road. Then I telephoned Bob Reynolds and we had dinner together. Ten years had not been kind to him. He looked tired, worn, and, and somehow... Karen, let's have it. We've had enough idle talk. What's all the mystery? Your cable told me nothing. The Narcotics Bureau has asked narcotics? me to... Yes. Are you working for them? Yes, why? Does that surprise you? No, no I, I... No, it doesn't. Opium is being used for the vilest purpose imaginable. Even the word itself is vile. It's going to Chinese soldiers fighting the communists. Before a big communist drive, the men get opium in their rations. You can imagine the result. Yes, I can. The brain goes wild, burns up. I want you to help me. What can I do? First of all, you are familiar with our methods of carrying out assignments. Yes, but... but... And you know China intimately. Karen, I haven't been on a job like this in years. I need you, Bob, very much. And any time you've needed me, I've always come running. You are a good friend. I'll never be anything else. Will you help me? I'll see what I can do. Can I see you tomorrow? Suppose I pick you up tomorrow night about uh, 7.30. We'll have dinner on the park roof. In the meantime, I'll see what I can find out. Yes, that will be wonderful. Yeah. Like old times. Karen, do you suppose that you and I could... Bob, ever... dear, I'm terribly tired. I have to see someone early in the morning. Would you mind taking me home now? I felt sorry for Bob Reynolds and touched. Deeply touched at his devotion. He was a fine, courageous, good man, and he was in love with me. I had never dreamed he would still feel this way about me, not after ten years. The next morning, I rose early and started for the shop of Ki Wai Lung, my official contact. I walked along Nanking Road, then turned down the narrow, winding Yu Yan Chang Road. It seemed strangely narrow after the automobiles, rickshaws, and trolleys I had left. I made my way through the crowd, the swarming children. Halfway down the block, I saw a sign in Chinese, below it in English. Ki Wai Lung, fine shape. I hurried towards it. There was a faint odor of incense in the dimly lit shop. A short, stout Chinese with a long gray goatee approached me. How do you do? May I be of some assistance? Yes, I'm interested in buying a jade. Jade from the Great Wall. But the best jade is still in the Great Wall. Do you have a sample of the site you are seeking? Yes. May I see it? Certainly. You will notice there are certain parts missing. I believe I can supply them. There. Both arms are now in place. Good. I am Baroness Karen Gazer. Forgive me, but I did not imagine they would send a woman. I'm not inexperienced. Perhaps the delicate touch of a woman in our difficult situation.
situation most helpless as the dewdrop enhances the beauty of the lotus blossom. I will do my best, General. Ah, do you know about me? Yes, General. And I understand that you can tell me how the opium is getting to the nationalist soldiers. In their ration. Is that all you know? For weeks I've been searching for the source, but each road I followed has led me nowhere. Perhaps I shall find faster means of transportation. The perpetual impatience of the Western people. Oh, but, General, don't you understand that men are dying, dying horribly? Can you give me no directions? Is there no place I can start? You will come perhaps tomorrow. Can you tell me today? You will allow me to think overnight, Baroness. Remember, an hour of thought is the birthday of a thousand ideas. It was useless to argue with this inscrutable orient of calm. I left the shop feeling angry and frustrated. Opium, the very word meant degradation, fear, and murder. I hurried along the Yu Yang Chang road between the rickshaws and the coolies. Then suddenly I realized I was being followed. Baroness. Uh, are you following me? This will be your only warning. Leave Shanghai to the people who understand it. What do you want? How do you know who I am? I repeat, Baroness. Leave Shanghai to the people who understand it. You will not be warned again. <laughs> It is I, Ming. Come in. Hello, Ming. Did you follow her? Yes, Mr. Reynolds. I obeyed your instructions. I just delivered the message. I'm afraid it's useless, Ming. Useless? She isn't the type that frightens easily. You are perhaps enamored of her beauty? I am indeed. And why do you not marry her and beat her? Go away, Ming. Leave me alone. Marriage is the union of souls that this is. Will you shut it? up and get out? You know perfectly well why I can't marry her, even if she'd have me. But she won't. Now get out. But the Baroness must die, must she not? Please, Ming, not now. But our orders, Mr. Reynolds, it is not for us to decide. Perhaps you would like me to uh, do it. No. No, I'll do it. When? I don't know. Soon. When? Tonight. How? I'm taking her to dinner at the park roof. And you will... Yes. She will fall? Yes. Twenty-one stories? Now, will you get out of here? I'll handle this my way. That's an order. Get out! Temper, Mr. Reynolds? is the sign of an uncertain mind. Hmm, the dinner was delicious. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Maybe it's all business now. All right. The stuff's coming from Sing Tao. That's north of here, isn't it? Yes, the best port on the coast of North China. Large? Half a million people. Is it held by the communists? The city's run by them politically. But the Red soldiers aren't in occupation. Yet. What else did you find out? I have a friend in Sing Tao who said he'd help. I telephoned him. Who is he? His name is Lin Zhuang. Lin Zhuang? I've been associated with him in some export deals. He has the contacts and the money to find out anything we want to know. Can we trust him? I've known him for years. What do you suggest? We take a steamer to Sing Tao tomorrow at noon. How long will it take? About a day. Well, tell me all about Ling Swan. Uh, Karen, let's go out on the roof. On the roof? Why? It, it, it's a wonderful view. I want you to see it. All right, if you want to. Uh, which way? Uh, to the right. Uh, through those French doors. Is it allowed? In China, anything's allowed if you've money enough. It's like New York. Quite a cynic, aren't you? Watch your step here. Thanks. Some view, isn't it? Oh, it's wonderful. 21 floors up, Shanghai looks so naked. Naked? As far as you can see, filth, misery. And the only thing that cleans it for you is death. Bob, why do you talk like Because that? I've been here ten years. There's China in all its disgusting reality. Bob, there's only a little help. China could be one of the greatest countries in the world. Karen. Yes. Karen. Oh, Karen.
Helen, I love you. Don't you understand that? No, no, no. Listen, listen to me. I've always loved you. You're the most beautiful woman I've ever known. Karen, please, marry me, please. Uh, Bob, I'm very fond of you, very fond. You're a good friend, a wonderful friend, but please stay that way. You don't love me? No, not that way. Okay. Okay, I guess that's all there is to say. You're a good friend, Bob, the best friend. No matter where I go, I always... That's all right, Karen, forget it. I knew how you felt. I, I shouldn't have said what I did, I guess. I just wanted to make sure, that's all. Look, look, that's... The international settlement. Come yes. closer to the edge. Yes. And then down there. Come closer, Karen. I won't let you fall. I know you wouldn't. From 21 stories, the people look like flies, don't they? Yes. Look straight down, Karen. It's wonderful. Yes, it is. Yes, Bob. I... Bob, what is it? You're turning... Karen, Karen, let's go home. We have a long day ahead of us. General Long, this is Karen Gator. Bob Reynolds has discovered the main source of our trouble is in Sing Tao. We are going there on a one o'clock boat. Your arrival in Shanghai has acted a sunlight on the garden of our problem, Baroness. May you have the best fortune in Sing Tao. You will return when? The day after tomorrow, or the next day. And General, I would I like... I shall await your report with gratitude and interest, Baroness. Goodbye. General Long. Hello. How do you like Sing Tao, Karen? Beautiful, what I've seen of it. And of course, there's something about riding in a rickshaw that has always fascinated me. You see that large brown house to your left? Uh, that one? That's uh, right. That's Lin Wong's home. Uh, hey, try not buy him, try not buy him. Uh, other side, Joe, Never other side. anything as stupid in your life. You're here. Uh, uh, Give me a hand, Karen. Uh, thanks. Here, you don't need to wait. Uh, hey, Joe. No good money. No good money. Beat it. Beat it, you dirty scum. Stop. I said beat it. Uh, I'll get going. Yes, Joe, I go. I, I go, I go. Come on, Karen. That was a disgraceful performance. The rickshaw driver? Are you kidding? What did you want? The soldiers and sailors spoiled these guys. Always gave them too much. Bob, all the work toward peace and understanding being done by the United Nations can so easily be undone by us little people. Oh, Karen, for Pete's sake. If you don't treat them like slaves, they Bob, walk... all that boy knows of us in America and our ideas is what you just did to him. If this happens all over China, that which Chinese will never believe that America really wants to help. Okay, Karen, okay. The next time I see him, I'll give him five bucks and take him home for dinner. You have changed. You never used to be like this. I'm the same guy, just a different play. New stage, ten years later, that's all. Here we are. Is he expecting us? Yes. My dear Robert, come in. And this must be the baroness. How do you do, Mr. Vaughan? My humble house is honored beyond measure, baroness. Thank you. What did I tell you, Karen? Smooth as silk, isn't he? And about as gentle as a tiger. Oh, please don't mind Bob, Mr. Vaughan. <laughs> I have known Robert a long time, Baroness. Did you get my message? I did. I trust you understood me. Perfectly. Do you have any definite information, Mr. Vaughan? Yes. There is an unoccupied warehouse on the west side of St. Tao. It is there that the work is done and there that the opium is packed. Are you certain? In the Orient, Baroness, we have many ways of discovering... Elusive facts. Uh, before we talk, could I freshen up a little? It was a long Forgive trip. Forgive me, and... Baroness. 
What about you, Robert? No, no, thanks. Uh, Li Ting, a young guardian. Uh, show the baroness to the front bedroom. Thank you. My house is perfumed by so beautiful a presence. Li Ting will give you anything you need. <laughs> you are very kind. I won't be long. Are you afraid of her, Robert? No. I'm told she is dangerous. Very dangerous. She is. There was, I believe, supposed to be an accident at the Park Hotel roof in Shanghai. I know, I know. But there was not. No, no. Why not? In downtown Shanghai, it was too dangerous. She's a baroness. She has friends. She's rich. She's not like the others. She is indeed not like the others. For such a woman, a man could all... Are you in love with her? No. You trifled with the truth? I'm not in love with her now. But you were once? Once. A long time ago. Then you will do it tonight at the warehouse. Will we be alone? Yes. I have cancelled the shipments for tonight. Are you coming with us? No. I am expecting a caller. Who? No one you know. Immediately after dinner, you will take her to the warehouse and kill her. And this time, Robert, hang on to your courage. If you fail tonight, there will be... Unpleasant repercussions. So Robert has taken her to the warehouse? Yes, General Lang. Did you tell him I was flying to Tsingtao? I said I was expecting a caller. I did not say who. And you feel that Robert is... He is in love with her. On his face it is written like the moon in the sky. When he looks at her, love out from his eyes like a comet. It is perhaps time we got rid of Robert, too. Your wisdom, General Lang, is profound. I will go down to the warehouse myself. Careful, Karen. Those cobblestones are slippery. Yes, and it's so dark. Here's the door. Now it's locked. One of my keys might work. Try it. Can you risk your flashlight? I can't see a thing. All right. I'll work fast. This one should... Oh, no. Hurry up, Karen. It's a simple lock. This one will do it. Miss Berenice. Get away from here. Beat it. Miss Berenice, please. I have to have I it. I said beat it. Scram. Who is he? Shall I get tough about it? No. Bob, who is he? He's at the dope. He called you by name. All right, so he knows me. Hurry up and get the door. Quiet, quiet. Shine your flashlight over there. The packing cases. What's all that written in Chinese? I don't know. I can't read it. I can only speak it a bit. Some of the boxes are open. Careful, Karen. Food. This must be the place. Yes, Karen. This is the place. Look, Bob. In each case of rations, a little bottle of dark, thick liquid. Yes. It's open. Look. Here's the box with just bubbles in it. Enough opium to stupefy the entire Chinese army. More than enough. They ship these rations from here to Shanghai. The distribution to the nationalist soldiers must be made from the supply depot here. That's right, Karen. We've got to burn this warehouse tonight. Now. Then we have got to find the man responsible for this. You needn't look too far for one of them. What? But you don't need that. Yes. You? I'm an opium addict. Oh, no, Bob. During my struggle to get the stuff, I got in with the people who handle this little deal. Bob, I don't believe it. You can't really mean that you... I promised myself that every time will be the last. That just once more and then I'll quit. But I can't quit. I'll never be able to quit. I'll go on and on until my brain gets soft and my eyesight goes... Karen, I hate it, I hate it. Bob, darling, please. Believe me, I hate it, but I can't quit. Don't you understand? With opium, once is forever. You can't quit. Once it gets in your blood, you're through, finished. That's why... Oh, Karen, why did you have to come here? Bob, you can't quit. I'll help you. You'll come home to the States and I'll help you. Nobody can help me. I can, I know I can. No, no. Listen, Bob, we can burn this place now, right now. It'll burn like a matchbox. We can get the steamer back to Shanghai in the morning, and we'll fly home and get you medical help. Oh, Karen, you're talking like a child. Bob, please listen to me. You can be this. People have been cured before, but you've got to want to be it. Want to be cured. 
And I promise I'll help you. Will you marry me? Marry you? Will you? Bob, I... I if you I... don't marry me, I won't, I won't. Bob, please, let's get out of here first. Let's burn this place and talk about will it. Will you marry me? Bob, please. Answer me, Karen, will you? Yes, yes, I will. Uh, but please, let's get out of here quickly. What's that? What? I heard something. It's near the door. Shine your flashlight over there, quickly. I don't see anything. As the shots rang out, I jumped behind a pile of cases. The flashlight Bob had held had been the only light in the warehouse. He had been a perfect target. The shots had come from the door. I stood there helpless, terrified, as I heard the slow, deliberate footsteps of an unknown killer drawing closer, closer. As Bob had fallen, the flashlight dropped from his hand. It beamed into a weary circle of blinding light on the opposite wall. Into this beam... As an actor would appear before a spotlight, that the tremendous shadow which instantly picked up the flashlight. Who is it? Who is it? The flashlight began to play around the warehouse. I crouched behind a packing case, watching this ghostly finger of light pick out tires, machinery parts, wrapped in canvas, gasoline drums. And case after case of opium, it moved towards where I was hiding. Slowly, relentlessly. Better it. I know you're in there. Come out. It's only a matter of time until... Ah. Now stand up. Quickly. You, you maniac. You are with the communists. Yes. Someday you will have driven out the last traces of Western democracy. Then China will be able to take up two faces in the communist world. Its people will be delivered from poverty and ruin. I will use opium. I will use anything to gain this end. Now, please, let us leave here quickly. I do not wish to harm you physically yet. Who the devil? Please give it to me. I'm, I'm going out of my mind. Out of a thousand dollars. Don't shoot him. I have to have it. I have to have it. Get out. Shoot him. He was here before. He's harmless. He's out the door. Give it to me. Give it to me or I kill you. General Long missed. The bullet hit a gasoline drum, and in an instant, one end of the warehouse was in flames. I stood there too horrified to move. Rage and murder were in the addict's dope-wrecked eyes as he stumbled toward General Lung. An inhuman power filled his crazed mind. Get away! Get away! Give it to me! There were no bullets left in General Lung's gun. A dope from fingers contracted in a death grip around the general's neck. Give it to me! Let go! His strangling hands gained strength as the general's fat body collapsed under the viciousness of his own selfish team. The three men fell to the floor. They lay still, both of them. The fire drew closer, cleansing, purifying, and I ran out into the clean, cold night. At the doorway, I turned back. For a last look at the closing scene in Assignment 16. The warehouse was burning furiously. And in the flames, it was a picture I would see forever. The two men were locked in death. And from an overturned case, a sticky stream of dark liquid opium was filling the general's distorted open mouth. And oozing out onto his Just heard Ilona Massey starring in NBC's transcribed series of intrigue and espionage, Top Secret. Here is Miss Massey with a preview of next week's story. Next week, a story that is strangely quiet, strangely ominous. A New York society woman with a background steeped in mystery turns straighter. The plan for sabotage. Next week on Top Secret. <laughs>
Top Secret is directed and produced by Harry W. Junkins. Tonight's script was written by William and Mary Schwartow. Heard in support of Miss Massey this evening were James Monk, Jack Edwards, Joe DeSantis, and Guy Rep. The music was composed and conducted by Dr. Roy Shield. All characters in Top Secret are fictitious. This is Fred Collins speaking. Robert Young inviting you to a story by Charles Boyer next on NBC. Welcome back. Well, a dramatic conclusion, if perhaps it had uh, have a handed. Uh, one interesting thing to note is James Monks, who was in the supporting cast in this episode, actually went on to star in a mystery espionage series called Mr. Moto, uh, where he played a character of I.A. Moto, who was an American intelligence agent. It's actually a pretty interesting series. Uh, we played it on Great Detectives of Old Time Radio a few years uh, back, and you can check out episodes either on the YouTube channel under the playlist, or I'll go over to biglist.greatdetectives.net. Well, overall, this has been an interesting series to, you know, hear a uh, spy series that uh, featured a female lead. It wasn't something that was very typical in the 1950s, but overall, Karen really does acquit herself quite well. And uh, again, this has been fun. Uh, I do hear rumors that other episodes may come into circulation. If that happens, then we will... Uh, do a revisit over here, which we haven't done before, but that's one of the things when you try to do a uh, complete series. We're going into our Olivia de Havilland uh, tribute, and that will mean programs on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So uh, be sure and join us for that. Uh, in the meantime, if you do have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.